Dikshas are composed on composed compositions on many uh, deities in various temples across the country. As I said, uh, he has composed on the on Vishnu at Badrinath and again on uh, uh, Rameshwara, Ramanatha in Rameshwara. Um, and these are all in many other temples and these are called Kshetra Kritis. The Kshetra refers to a holy place, a temple town is called a Kshetra. And um, these compositions um, incorporate many details about the temple, about the, the deity, about the consort of the deity, about uh, any special festivals associated with the, tem with the temple and the deity. Um, the, the temple tank, there are references to the temple tank, the temple tree, any other lore that is connected with the temple. For instance, um, he has composed a, a composition in the Raga Todi on the temple at Guru Ayur dedicated to Lord Krishna. Here the Charanam line starts with the description of the deity. The Vishnu is supposed to have Shankha Chakra Gada and a lotus and that is completely incorporated in the Charanam line like this. Shankha Chakra Gada Padma Vana Malam Shankha Chakra Gada Padma Vana Malam and so on until the charanam line the last line goes this is a madhyama kala sahitya it comes in the second speed Mahitam Shri Guru Gukha Muditam Rama Sahitam Pankajadal Nayadu Vatashayadu Guru Pavana Puradisham Nogesham Shri Krishnam Bhajamanasa over here, Guru, Guru Pavana Puradhesham refers to the Guru Ayur uh, city, the town of Guru Ayur, where this temple is situated. Um, he has composed on the Navagrahas, the nine planets, according to Hindu astrology, and uh, these are interestingly set in the Suladi Saptatala. So, beginning with Surya, that is the sun god, he sets it in the first Sulaji Saptatara, that is Dhruva. Surya Murte Namo Sute Sundara Chaya Deepa Te Surya Murte Namo Sute. This is the composition on the sun god, on the sun, and uh, uh, the Chandra, the next Monday, is associated with the, the moon. And he has composed a composition, Matya Tana, which is the second, Suladi Saptatara. And then the third, which is on Angarakan or um, Mars, that is uh, set in Rupa Katara and so on. So the Suladi Saptataras are um, brought into play in these Navagraha Kritis. The Kamalamba Navavarnams are by far the most famous um, group of compositions that. Uh, we associate with Dikshadar. 
Kamalamba is the is a deity in the magnificent temple at Tiruvarur. The main deity is Thyagaraja in this temple and his consort is Nilotpalamba. And on both Thyagaraja and Nilotpalamba we have a set of Vibhakti Kritis. But Kamalamba is another very unique deity in this temple. If you even look at her, the iconography, it is it is very different from any that you would have seen. The very stance, the sitting position of this uh, deity is unique. And Kamalamba is not the consort of Thyagaraja. She is a yogini. She is, a, she is in meditation seeking union with Thyagaraja. And it is said, it is believed that when she achieves that, that will be apocalypse. That will be pralaya. So, um, Kamalamba is very strongly associated with the cult of Sri Vidya, the Sri Chakra Vasana, and uh, Dikshidhar's Navavarna compositions on Kamalamba are very justly renowned for their musical weight as well as for the immense uh, richness of the text. Another magnificent group of compositions is on the uh, Panchabhuta Linga Kritis. That is, uh, there are five temples that are associated with the, the Linga, the Shiva Linga is regarded as a manifestation of one of the five primal elements, what you call Panchabhutas, Panchamahabhutas. They are the earth, the principle of earth, the principle of air, water, fire and space. So, for instance, the temple at Tiruvannamalai is regarded the um, Agni, is regarded as um, the, the Linga there is, it embodies the principle of Agni. Um, now, if you, but these compositions are again very interesting from the literary point of view and musically also. If you listen to this composition at this link, Jambupati, this is on the Lord Jambupati, Jambupati, and uh, the raga is Yamuna, very appropriately because Jambupati is the principle of water and Yamuna is a sacred river and uh, the composition if you hear it, it is at least very different from the normal uh, Carnatic composition that we hear um, and uh, it, it resembles, it could even remind you of North Indian music in its gait and its texture. This is possibly because of his uh, stay in Varanasi where he no doubt would have heard Hindustani music and he possibly imbibed some of its aspects and he brought it out in some of his compositions. And here again you have very interesting uh, in weaving in of uh, Advaitic uh, concepts here. Anirvachaniya Nada Bindu is a beautiful profound Advaitic idea. He was also exposed to um, Western band music. He has left behind 40 odd compositions which um, whose tunes are derived from Western band music. Kamala Patinuta Gridaye Maya Kamala Shri 
if it's for not, uh, he is very frequently, Dikshita is spoken of as an intellectual. And uh, there is, this is the reason that he, he brings his um, varied exposures to bear upon his music, his Sanskrit scholarship, his interest in Sri Vidya, his interest in uh, religious lore, and uh, his interest in Sanskrit poetry and in music itself. Now, Prasha, as I mentioned, Dvitiya Akshara Prasha is something that we find in most Carnatic compositions in some form. Sometimes if there, there are two lines in the Pallavi, the, both the lines of the Pallavi will have Dvitiya Akshara Prasha or the first line of the Pallavi and the first line of the Anupallavi will have Dvitiya Akshara Prasha. That almost always happens. So, for instance, if you look at this, the two, two or three compositions we just considered, Dakshinamurti. So here it is Dakshinamurti Vidalita Dasarti. The Anupallavi first line is Akshaya Suvarna Vatavriksha Moolasthite. So you can see that the Ksha Prasha is there. Um, the first line of the Pallavi and the first line of the Anupallavi. And as it happens, the Anupallavi has completely maintained the Ksha Prasha. The first line of the Pallavi and the first line of the Anupallavi in the compositions of the Trinity, there you usually find Prasha. But in Dikshita's case, we find uh, Prasha in many forms. For instance, if you take this uh, composition, very well, well known composition in the Raga Manirangu, Mamava Pattabhirama, the charam goes like this. Chatra, so you can see the, the alliteration, the prasha on ta and tra, that is again and again in, used in this, uh, the charanam, deliberately, obviously. Chatra chamara taradhrita bharata lakshmana matri vasishthadya nugraha patra dasharatha putra maniranga valyalankrita navaratna mandape vichitra manimaya simhasane Sita Yasagasam Stita Sucharitra Parama Pavitra Guru Guha Mitra Pankaja Mitra Vausha Sudha Buddhi Chandra Medini Bala Ramaya Chandra Mamava Patabhirama So here you have this use of the ta, tra, in fact the, that whole varga, ta, ta, da, da, all of them are repeated, used in, it is like Vikshita is, is playing with that, that entire set of uh, syllables. And this composition again you can see, I mentioned that the composition is in the Raga Manirangu. The name of the raga is almost always incorporated in Dikshita's compositions. In this case, Maniranga Valyalankrita Navaratna Mandapi. So, the, 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 you are sitting on a throne that is studded with manis. So, the, in this way, he brings in the word, name of the raga, Maniranga. And, um, in uh, all his compositions, mostly all of his compositions, you have the name of the raga woven into the text of the composition. And sometimes it is uh, it's, it's in a very interesting way, uh, not you know straightforward. So the name of the raga will be hidden in a long complex 
in long compound word for instance. So this uh, in this composition for instance in Arabhi, the Raga's name is Arabhi. So he he incorporates it like this samsara bhi. So samsara is world, bhi is fear. Tyapahe, samsara bhi tyapahe. That is you who destroy the the fear of the the fear in the sense metaphysical fear of the world. Uh, so this is in praise of Saraswati. You can just hear this uh, composition rendered. What's a night? Ankita is Guru Guha and you find that in all his compositions. So uh, Guru Guha and the name of the Raga is uh, always woven into the composition. Now another interesting way in which the name of the Raga is incorporated, I will uh, take up this magnificent composition of his Meenakshi Me Mudan Dehi. This is in praise of Meenakshi at the temple in Madurai. The text of the composition is like this. She is Matangi. Meenakshi is called Matangi. Meenakshi Me Mudan Dehi. Mudan is joy not uh, any ordinary worldly joy, the bliss of union with the divine or the bliss of Advaitic realization. That is mudam here. And uh, that is borne out in the Anupallavi line which has the very famous lines here. Mana matri meye maye. This is completely Advaitic. Mana is pramana, that is, you are the, the means of knowledge. Matra, you are the knower. Maye, and you are the known. You are Maya. There can possibly not be a more beautiful encapsulation of Advaita than these lines. Mana matri meye maye Maragada chaye shiva jaye mean then these lines are very famous mean a lochani pasha mochani manini kadamba vanavasini the meenakshi is called meenakshi because her eyes are supposed to be shaped like the fish pasha mochani here again as you can see there is prasha very beautiful prasha in this uh, both in the Pallavi and in the Pallavi the, the word in fact the entire song the ma makara is there is a lot of prasha on that pasha mochini is deliverance from bondage madhura puri nilaye reference to the temple town mani valaye Malaya Dvaja Pandya Raja Tanaye. Meenakshi is supposed to have been the daughter of the king of the Pandyas. She was born to him at the end of a, a, a sacrifice, a yajna. According to religious lore, Meenakshi was a warrior 
princess and she went conquering the eight directions until she met Shiva with whom she fell in love and married him. So that is the religious lore associated with Meenakshi and you can see that here there is reference to that too in this compositions. Vijaye, he says Vijaye. Vidhu Vidambana Vadane Vijaye and then you have Veena Agana Dasha Gamaka Kriye. And that is how he incorporates the name of the Raga. Gamaka is, he says that you are, uh, you can bring out the ten kinds of Gamakas in the, on the Veena. And uh, the Madhyamakala Sahitya ends with the extremely evocative epithet Shankari. Sham is anything that is auspicious. Shamkari. So you who bring about auspiciousness. He ends with that. This, this composition ends on that note. Now, now it is said, it is believed that Dikshidhar passed away on a Deepavali and uh, at the moment that his disciples were singing, he asked them to sing this composition. And as they were saying, Meena Lochani, Pasha Mochani, it said that he, he left his mortal coil. That is what is believed. With, um, because Pasha Mochani is liberation from bondage. And that is how Dikshadar is, um, Dikshadar lived and composed. And uh, that is uh, why he he is he has left a very very definitive impact on Carnatic music. Yeah.